United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Hi, my name is Bill Francis, and I'm the Associate Rector at St. Clement's Church here in El Paso, and, and I'd like to welcome all of you to United in Christ. And uh, that really is a, really is a special, uh, a special uh, thing about being walking with the Lord, is that He calls us to be at one, not only with Him, but with one another. And uh, I would like to start off by reading this uh, well-known passage of Scripture, uh, Jesus had risen from the dead, and then he told his disciples that he was going to meet them in, in Galilee in the mountain. And it says here, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. You know, the last words of Jesus, we find in here two incredibly important things that Christians are to be about. The first one is worship. There probably isn't anything more important than our gathering together in God's house, the church, and worshiping him. And that's what the disciples did. That was the first church. When they met Jesus on the mountain, there they were, gathered together, and worshiped the Lord when they saw him there on the mountain. And then it was out of that context of worship that the second most important thing that we can be about as Christians is that Jesus then gave them the Great Commission, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And you know, we here in El Paso have the opportunity to carry out that Great Commission uh, through the Franklin Graham Festival of Hope that is going to be coming here in April, April 5th and 6th at the uh, Don Haskins Center. It'll be a time in which we believe that there's going to be a great harvest of precious souls. And we have the opportunity and the blessing and the privilege of being a part of that. And uh, I have with us here today Pastor David Lowry, who is the pastor of First Baptist Church. He has been with First Baptist now for about four years, has a great heart for not only our El Paso community, but also, also the community of Juarez. And and uh, I've asked him if he would come today and talk to us a little bit about, about his experience with the preparations that have been going on with the Franklin Graham Festival of Hope. So, Pastor Lowry, thank you so much thank for you. being with us today. And uh, I know that First Baptist has been very much involved in preparation for this, uh, what I believe is going to be a very, very special event. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we... Uh we were obviously very excited that they were coming to town, so we got involved very early. Our uh, student minister, Dan McGlasson, offered our facilities for the, uh, to host the, uh, the youth training. And so for the last three Wednesday nights before this week, we hosted about 900 teenagers at First Baptist Church. And it was just exciting to see the place filled overflowing with kids who were excited about the Lord, who wanted to be trained, and who wanted to be a generation to make a difference in El Paso. 900 young people gathered in your church. That is just, that is incredible. You know, when I heard that about that, I was thinking, you know, the Lord is really doing something special here in El Paso when you have that kind of a turnout for, with the young, young people. And that, of course, that's the future of our church. Uh, if the young people aren't embracing the gospel, then the church is one generation away from distinction and uh, extinction. And uh, so thank God that... Uh, that the Lord is moving in the hearts of the young people. Um, tell me, what was it? Uh, what was it about about this organization? The, of course, Billy Graham has got this thing going. Franklin Graham, his son, has carried it on. But uh, when you heard that they were coming into town, what was your what was your response? What were your thoughts about that? Yeah, well, <clears throat> when I first heard the news, my first response was, "Where do I sign up?" You yeah. know, because everything I knew about how the Graham Association worked, I knew that they would help us as a Christian community to do the very best we could to present the good news of Jesus to El Paso and that they would draw in all kinds of churches to work together. You know, that's one of the great needs in a city like ours is to not try to minister out there by ourselves, 
but to see what we can do corporately. And, and I knew that they had done that in many places around the world. Now, of course, El Paso is fairly unique, and uh, we met some challenges in terms of uh, how that was going to flesh itself out in El Paso. But, but it's been exciting to see you know, people from different faith traditions, uh, different worship styles, different even ethnic groups to come together under one cause reminds me of maybe what heaven will be like one day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a glorious time, and we can taste a little bit of it here. You know, I can remember, I grew up here in El Paso, and I can remember when I was 14 years old about hearing about Billy Graham coming to El Paso. That was back in 1962, mm. and that was before the, the, the Sun Bowl was built, uh, and so they had the meeting at uh, Kid Field. And, of course, there were thousands that, that went to that, and there were many that came to the Lord, and, in fact, you know, I still talk to people today that, that initially gave their lives to Christ from that, that first meeting that uh, Billy Graham here, uh, had here back in 1962. And now, uh, 54 years later, here comes his son, Franklin Graham. Mm. And uh, I think it's interesting how, how Franklin Graham felt the Lord was leading them to come here. Normally, I understand that they need about two years of preparation before they come into a community. And it was about this time last year that Franklin Graham was praying and that he felt God had put El Paso on his heart, that he was to come here. And he told that to his staff, and his staff said, how can we do that? There's not enough time. And he said, the Lord has placed El Paso mm. on my heart, and mm. we need to do this. And they said, yes, sir, started scrambling. And we've been scrambling with them, haven't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why don't you talk to us a little bit about about their, what you've seen in their organization and, and the, the ways that they, they do things and uh, their commitment to the Lord. You know, as you talk about his uh, sense of timing, of course we know that here in this valley, uh, we talk about El Paso, but our two cities, El Paso and Juarez, are really sister cities. And, and there's been a tremendous amount of international prayer for what God was doing here in this valley. Uh, Rick Gage uh, had a crusade in Juarez back a few months ago, and uh, we saw over 3,000 people accept Christ mm. at that event. And, I, and when he came to town and heard Franklin was coming to town, he felt really encouraged that maybe he was part of something much bigger than what he ever imagined, that God was actually working on many different fronts because Rick is a national evangelist. He hadn't talked to Franklin, and yet both of them under the leadership of the Lord ended up here at the same time. As far as the way they, uh, they've, we've been on a fast track, but you know they have a very systematic way of helping us come together. You know, one of the first things that we did was to try to recruit as many churches as possible and to get pastors to uh, prayerfully consider being part of it. I think last I heard we had at least 170 churches. That's what I hear. And, um, and I had the privilege of being part of that task force and talking to different pastors and. By and large, the vast majority were just like me. Where do I sign up? How can I get involved? And then, uh, of course, immediately after <clears throat> making a commitment, they explained to us as leaders, this is what we want to do, not just on the weekend of the event, but in the weeks leading up to it. And that's where the Christian Life and Witness training came in. Mm. You know, as um, th I think we've had about 2,800 men and women and teenagers in our city who've spent six hours of training not only about what they'll do that weekend, but more importantly, what they're gonna do with the rest of their lives. Because I think, in fact, I was talking to the uh, Derwood Keaton, who's over FCA here in El Paso. And yesterday he told me, from his perspective in student work, if they left town today and didn't do anything else, that they've already made a huge difference mm. in the lives of the, of the students he works with. Because every one of those young men and women know what it means to follow Christ, they know how to share their faith. They know the importance of sharing the gospel with others. And so, you know, basically they've invested in the body of Christ. We'll have a harvest event, but I think their hope is that the church in El Paso will be much stronger, more vibrant, and that what starts that weekend will only be the beginning. Mm -hmm. That it won't be the end of the story, it'll actually be the start of the story. Right. It's a, it's a great launching time for, for us in the body of Christ as we participate in this in this very worthy endeavor you know one of the things that uh, has also happened as a result of the christian life and witness course is that there have already been people that have 
given their lives to Christ. Isn't that incredible? I got a got a report the other day that the the uh, the group that's been meeting out at uh, at Sierra Vista uh, that uh, there were 15 people that, as a result of that training, realized that they were actually not following the Lord and gave their lives to Christ, and now they are. Yeah. And so we're all we're already seeing a harvest of souls coming mm -hmm. into the kingdom of God. And uh, and we're just in the preparation time. I think what you also had, what you said about the 170 some odd churches coming together. This is one of the, the great benefits of this effort. Is that yeah, the focus is evangelism. The focus is reaching out to the un the unsaved. But in the process of doing that, the body of Christ comes together. Churches start working to, working together. We start meeting one another for the first time, and that's a great great mm -hmm. benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, I, of course, the scripture you read at the outset, you know, as a pastor, and, and you know this, that simply having someone pray a prayer is only the beginning of their spiritual life. And Jesus really called us to make disciples. And that's where the churches are going to have to pick up the ball. I know our church, we're already uh, planning, I call it the uh, born again nursery, because we're hoping to see, you know, 50 to 100 people that our church members took to the events that gave their hearts to Christ that will come back to First Baptist and and we want to be ready so the first Sunday after the event when they come to church that Sunday that we're ready to help them to get off to a good start mm. because uh, you know we're in a city that's I think incredibly religious but many people don't really know the depths of what Christ wants to do in their life uh, they They'll go to church regularly or occasion, certainly during this Lent season. But, um, you know, we want to see them grow spiritually, to mature and become everything God wants them to be. And uh, the best way to do that is to get them off to a fast start. So. Yes, sir. Well, you had mentioned something about the bring a friend. What, can you talk to us a little bit about that, that emphasis that we see in their, their outreach, the bring a friend? What does that mean? Well, I, it's pretty simple, you know. We believe that unless we bring our friends to the event who are seeking spiritually, the likelihood in our culture today, they're not going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, the name Franklin Graham means something within the Christian community, but sadly we've become increasingly more secular, and many people simply don't recognize that name, nor do they intentionally on a weekend choose to go to some kind of spiritual event. But, it, but that's where these weeks leading up to it, as we cultivate those friendships, or I start talking to the friends we've had for years and, and say to them, would you go with me? Uh, you know, I think the arena seats about 12,000. You know, my hope would there be maybe four to 5,000 believers in there and six or 8,000 people mm -hmm. who are seeking spiritually. Uh, Bill Merritt, who's leading our church effort, he's a former Army colonel. And he, he told our church, I thought it was sort of, insightful and fun he said there is a 100 percent chance that your friend will show up at the event if you take them mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know if you invite them who yeah. knows if they'll come but if yeah. you put them in your car and, and you take them there's a hundred percent chance they'll be there they'll and, be there <laughs> and that's you know that's sort of our motto is let's do let's go the hundred percent let's pick them up let's take them you know maybe go out to dinner before go out for coffee afterwards you know making it a, a fun time but introduce them to the, give them the opportunity to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they've seen it in our lives, but sometimes an evangelist can say it in a way that puts all those pieces together, all those seeds that you planted so that they can make that decision. So that's why bringing a mm -hmm. friend is so essential. Yeah, and you know, people are waiting to be asked. You know, Barna, uh, the research organization came up with this, uh, this figure and that was this, that one out of every three people that you invite to come to church will say yes, they'll come. One out of every three. And you know, I think we in, as Christians in our Christian culture, we're, you know, we don't want to impose ourselves, we don't want to impose Christianity on people, and so some, sometimes I think we're more reticent than what we should be about, about, about being more assertive in our faith and, and inviting people to come. When you think about that, that is a big, big percentage of people in our society that are just waiting waiting to hear from a Christian that, to come to church, invite them to church. And really that, I think that's, that ultimately is what we're, what we're doing here with the Franklin Graham 
Festival of Hope, and that is that, yeah, we're inviting them to come to the event in which they're going to hear great proclamation of the gospel, beautiful music, wonderful get-together. But hopefully after that, all of the folks that come to know the Lord will then start in a congregation, Bible-believing church somewhere in our community. That's essential. Yeah, it yeah. really is. And so they, they just don't come in, Franklin Graham and the organization, they don't just come in for you know a two-day thing and then off they go. They're going to be here for some follow-up. Can you talk to us about that? Uh, yes. Basically, they are training. You know, Part of the Christian Life and Witness training was to raise up an army of people who are ready and willing to go and to build these relationships with new believers. Um, my understanding is on Tuesday after the event, they would have already processed the names, addresses, and information of every single person who made some kind of spiritual decision. And then those names will be entrusted to churches who have done the hard work to get ready. In other words, they're not just going to scatter those to any and every church in town. They're going to invest those precious lives in the hands of churches that have prepared themselves. And then the intention is within that week or no later than two weeks that every one of the persons who made a spiritual decision would have someone come to their home, sit down with them, help to make sure they understood what was going on. You know, because oftentimes in a big event, emotions will catch you. You see someone go forward, you go forward. There's a lot of people talking. And so we want to make absolutely sure that every person who makes a decision fully comprehends what they're doing. And so that home visit will be a chance for them to confirm that decision, answer any questions, it'll be in their environment so they'll be more comfortable, and then to invite them to be part of what, what they call discovery groups. And the discovery groups will be a seven week, you know, basic training for Christians. And it will teach them things about, you know, what happened to them? Can they be sure that they have this relationship with Christ? What does it mean to pray? How do you read your Bible? How do you get involved in a local church? And so it will teach those basic things to all of these new believers some of the discovery groups will be out in the neighborhood. Some will be, like in our case, we're going to have classes in our actual church on Sunday morning. And during those weeks, we hope to see people grow and develop. Now, one of the things they do, and I guess sort of as a warning, is if they give you a name as a church and you don't do anything in two weeks, then they take it away and they give it to somebody else. Because they're absolutely they're determined that that person mm -hmm. is incredibly important to God and that they deserve and it should expect that the body of Christ respond. And mm. so, you know, every church involved knows that if you don't do your job within two weeks, they're going to say, you know, thanks, but we're going to give that name to someone else. Mm -hmm. And so certainly within a month, there should be someone in every home of every person who made a commitment to Christ. And, and the thing about that is, you know, let's say one of our teenagers brought a friend from his high school and he made a commitment. When you go into that home, mom and dad may not have even attended the event. And suddenly you can take this good news beyond the person who attended the event. Mm. So if say two, 3,000 accepted Christ, the ripple effect could be in the multiples of thousands mm. beyond that. Mm -hmm. it, and certainly in our city with our culture here being mm -hmm. so family oriented, right, right. you know, one person come to faith in Christ, a whole family may be influenced by that one decision and so it's the follow-up is going to be exciting but i'm trying to get my people ready for some hard work you know it, we you know it, we have to be ready in fact we think the most important work will be right after it's over yeah that's when we really need to be ready to roll yeah and that's that is such a strong emphasis with the organization you know we have been really blessed to have the graham staff with us now for about i think they moved here about five months ago, something, something like, like that. that yeah. uh, five or six of them, committed men of God uh, that uh, fly in every every week from different parts of the country where they live. And they spend uh, uh, five or six days with, with us here, organizing, getting things ready, communicating, and all of these things. Going to be with us during the event, but then along with that, they're committed to being here for seven weeks afterwards. And that's saying a lot about this God-anointed organization that has been responsible for for reaching absolutely, literally millions of people all over the world for so mm -hmm. many years. Um, 
You know, one of the things that uh, has occurred to me about about Billy Graham and his son now, Franklin Graham, who has taken on, on his mantle, is that not only is there a mantle of evangelism, but for the past 15 or so years, uh, Franklin has brought in a new dimension to the organization, the mercy ministry, right. the relief work uh, that's going on. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the two-handed gospel and how that works together. Well, of course, I think uh, Franklin recognized it in the ministry of Jesus that one of the ways that we uh, have the opportunity to speak into someone's life is by showing acts of compassion and mercy. And of course, those of us who live here on the border, and particularly in our neighborhoods, there's such, <laughs> such tremendous need. And if the body of Christ doesn't express the compassion, if we don't get involved in people's lives, then, then we're, I don't think we're doing all that Christ showed us in his ministry um, now I think the danger of the mercy ministry is if you only do that and you never share the hope of the gospel mm. then you you fed them you've uh, clothed them but you've left them without the real source of life that can pull them out of some of those cycles of despair and poverty mm. and I think that's the tension that us, those of us here have to wrestle with is you know being sure that we express compassion but not be ashamed to, to share the good news of Christ. And I think that's what Franklin's trying to do is find that balance, that tension between those two extremes. And within the body of Christ, I think, you know, Baptists, I think if we've been guilty of something, we've probably been more on the preaching of the gospel mm -hmm. and not as much into what some would call the social gospel. But I believe ever since I moved here, we have to have both in El Paso. And I think Franklin, that's part of the reason it's a great connection here. It's interesting how Convoy of Hope was just recently here. Yes, of course, that's, that's the true. Mercy Ministry Outreach. They're very evangelical as well, but to have them and then and now Franklin Graham you know, right on their heels. It's uh, we, like the Holy Spirit's up to something. Something's going on here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, yeah. of course, you and I are part of the Downtown Church Connection, and, um, and that's the beauty of what we're doing downtown is we're collaborating and working together mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, meeting people's needs and, when I came to First Baptist, I didn't want to duplicate what others were doing. I wanted us to co cooperate with others because Baptists had tended to be sort of isolationist, and, and I felt like we have to work together. Amen. Amen. You know, something that I need to mention before, I, before we, we go off here, and that is that if in the course of this interview, maybe you have become interested in being involved in the Franklin Graham outreach, but you've not participated in the Christian Life and Witness course, that's a requirement that you do that. Well, that, that has already, that's in the past, that's already been done. However, there is a makeup class that is going to be offered. In fact, it'll be at our church at St. Clement's this Saturday from eight o'clock until about 4.30. All three, se all three sessions uh, are going to be offered. And so if you missed one, two or all of those sessions, you can come to St. Clement's at 8 o'clock Saturday morning and take the entire course, and then that will qualify you to be a counselor and to participate uh, in this, uh, this marvelous evangelistic event. So uh, please consider that. Absolutely. It's not too late to get involved. Still not too late. And, yeah. uh, six hours. I mean, the great thing about that training is it, you'll get blessed. I was. And I've been to all kinds of training, but the communicators are excellent. Materials very well done. It and really it'd be is. a great day. You know, I might go over there and do it again. Who knows? <laughs> it's always always good to review the basics, isn't it? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Gets you fired up for the Lord. That's uh -huh. true. Well, uh, Pastor Larry, I do thank you for coming and and uh, participating in this interview and. Thank you for your involvement, uh, not only with this outreach, this special outreach to our community, but also for uh, being here now for four years in El Paso and for the great heart that you have for our, our community, both El Paso and Juarez. And God is blessing your, your ministry because of that. Thank you so well, very you. much. Did you have anything else that you wanted to share with us before we're done here? Yeah, I would just encourage the Christians to pray. You know, I, I think that you know, these next 30 days, we just really need to seek the Lord because uh, when people, you know, he has to do it. And if, if the Lord doesn't show up, all this works in vain. And so I would just encourage people to pray. That's what we're going to try to do 
in these coming days. And you know, we just, today is, for us in our church, this is Ash Wednesday, this is the beginning of Lent. And right. of course, of course, Lent is a time of, of great preparation, you know, right. for, for the Easter celebration. And part of that preparation is exactly what you said, praying, fasting, giving, um, being in that place of being willing to sacrifice for the Lord, but really it's not a sacrifice. When we, when we offer our spiritual disciplines to God uh, with the right motivation, then He, He, uh, He replaces the sacrifice with That's His, true. with the great benefits, spiritual, eternal benefits that come from His great heart uh, to ours as we offer ourselves to the Lord. And uh, we'd just like to encourage you who are watching to offer yourselves to the Lord and please consider praying for giving to this incredible opportunity this evangelistic opportunity to reach our city for Jesus Christ that many thousands of people will come to know him as a result of our our offering ourselves to the Lord and his purposes for this world may the kingdom of God in El Paso be advanced and strengthened as a result of this very very worthwhile effort please pray and consider giving as well there there's financial needs that we that we have and if the lord has touched your heart today uh, to to give to this uh, special event then please consider giving you can you can contact the the uh, festival of life franklin graham people uh, here in el paso their their telephone number is 219-7991 and their staff, and their, their, uh, the office where they're located is right next door to uh, Channel 38 KSCE. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, not only in terms of volunteering your help and your time, but also in giving, uh, this is a very worthwhile project to give. You know, they, have, they are putting in 1.2 or $3 million into this effort. And they have asked the El Paso Christian community to come up with only $300,000. Why don't you pray about being a part of that? And thank you for watching. Pastor Lowry, thank you thank for you. being with us today. May God bless you and your ministry. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. Or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours. Or you can visct our website at www.kscd.com. God bless you.